So you decided you wanted to go down the road of physical therapy, but you're still wondering, hmm, should I be a PTA or should I go become a DPT? And there's a big difference becoming an assistant or a doctor of physical therapy. So today, in this video, we're going to be covering the differences between a PTA and a DPT. So in this video, I'm going to have Bustin helping us out by talking about a physical therapy assistant and Justin talking about doctor of physical therapy. Guys, introduce yourselves. What's up guys? I'm Bustin. I'm a physical therapy assistant. And I'm Justin. I'm a doctor of physical therapist. Some quick facts you guys need to know. There are two programs in the United States that bridges a physical therapy assistant to becoming a DPT. These programs are University of Finlay and UTMB. Basically, in these programs, you have to become your physical therapy assistant and you're working. And while you're working, you're going through school to becoming a DPT. If you guys want more information about this, make sure you comment below on if you're interested, if you want to know more about the bridge program. It is good to know that becoming a PTA is not a stepping stone to becoming a DPT. Now the educational requirements, we're going to go over this later in this video, but a PTA only requires an associate's degree, while as a DPT requires a doctorate degree after undergraduate studies. So it's a lot more education. We're going to go more in depth about that later on in this video. All right, so let's get into it. The differences between a physical therapy assistant and a doctor of physical therapy. Guys, you guys are gonna help me out. Let go. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Dr. Lit for Change, or you can call me Justin Lee. Here on this channel, you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self change. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe and hit those notifications so you can support me and so that you won't miss a video when it drops. Okay, so you guys met Bustin and Justin earlier in this video. They're gonna help me out in talking about the differences between a physical therapy assistant and a doctor of physical therapy. We're gonna be covering four different areas in the differences. The different areas we're gonna be covering is schooling, tuition, salary, and job duties. So all four things are very different for an assistant and a doctorate program or a doctorate of physical therapy. So make sure you're taking notes in knowing the differences so that you can make the right decision for your future. All right, let's get into it. Bustin, Justin, come on out, tell them what you got. In schooling to become a doctor of physical therapy, you need to go through school for at least seven years. That's four years of undergraduate studies, if it takes you four years, and three additional years for doctorate school. This can add up and you'll probably be around, if you go straight into it, maybe about 24, 25 years old when you graduate. So as a physical therapy assistant, you only need two years to get your associate's degree. Now, you can get this at a community college or a private institution, but just an associate's, you do not need a bachelor's, you just need your high school diploma and then you can go straight into an associate program for a physical therapy assistant. Now, I would just be careful because there are a lot of programs out there that are not accredited. So make sure when you're researching for your program, you look for an accredited program by the CAPTE. Oh, all right, tuition. Yeah, this is something that is something that's really, really unfortunate for our profession. Tuition is super costly for becoming a doctor of physical therapy. In public schools, it can be somewhere around $66,000 for the entire three years. And for private schools, it can be over $110,000 in tuition alone. That's a pretty, pretty steep, hill of tuition, a big chunk of money that you're going to need and eventually pay off that debt. That is crazy. That is so much money. As a physical therapy assistant, tuition at a community college can be somewhere between $5,000 to $8,000. That's it. And if you decide if you want to go into a private institution, you're going to pay somewhere between $10,000 to $20,000. 
But that compared to that might be a better decision. And you get it done in two years versus four years of undergrad and three years of doctorate school. So salary for a doctor of physical therapy is significantly more than a physical therapy assistant, but we go through a lot more schooling. Now the salary, I think, right Bustin, for right. Both, both of us comes from the US Bureau of Statistics, of Labor and Statistics. And for an average salary for a doctor of physical therapy is about $89,000. Now this is an average, right? Which is gonna be different from the different states and different locations in the state, but about $89,000 for my salary. So for a physical therapy assistant salary, we make about $48,000 a year. Again, just like Justin mentioned, it's the average, right? So it's gonna be different from state to state. So just consider your options and consider your location and you should try to research before you get into whatever profession that you want. So as a DPT, I earned that D, right? I earned a doctorate degree. So I'm the head honcho, I make all the decisions. I make the decisions on the plan of care, I assess the patient, I diagnose the patient, I can reassess them and discharge them. So I pretty much make all the decisions determining whether the patient is good for PT and they're making progress or maybe PT is not a good place and I should just refer them out to a different healthcare professional. Now under my duties, I'm in charge of supervising a PTA and PT aides or PT techs as well but they are all under my responsibility. And I get to determine if a PTA is appropriate or aids are appropriate for the effectiveness and the safety for my patients. So if I had a patient that was really wobbly and like I didn't trust my assistant or my aide to hold them to make sure they don't fall, then I'm definitely gonna take care of that patient myself versus have someone else take care of them, have them fall, and then it's on me. So as an assistant, I'm the one that takes patients from the doctor of physical therapy, right? And so when they hand them off to me, I'm the one that's typically seeing them on a daily or a weekly basis pretty regularly. So I get to check in on them, make sure they're making their progress. I'm the one that gets to build that relationship on like, hey, I made some progress and then I kind of recline or decline. Let me bring it back up again. So as long as I'm still treating in the plan of care that Justin, the doctor physical therapist has determined, then we're all on track. But typically with my profession and my job, I see them more regularly than the PT would. But just like he mentioned, he can take a patient back and kind of hold on to them and check in with them, especially if their symptoms and their pain is pretty irregular. Um, it's good to know that if I determine like, hey, this patient is not consistent and they keep coming in back and forth, I can consult with the therapist, the main primary care therapist, and say, hey, look, this patient isn't doing well. Um, I think you should look at them again. So there is a continuum of care and communication between the assistant and the doctor, right? And so I just wanna let you guys know that as an assistant, I cannot diagnose, I cannot determine a plan of care, I can't assess the patient, create goals, or change the way that treatment works. I pretty much have to do what Justin says as the yeah, primary that's physical true. therapist. But even though that he is the primary therapist and I'm the assistant and I'm under him, we're still a team, right? Yeah, we're a team. Come on, high five. Nope, nope, Corona. All right, all right. All right, so did you guys learn a lot from Bustin, the physical therapy assistant, and Justin, the doctor of physical therapy? If you did, give this video a like, share with this with your friends on the differences between a PTA and a DPT. So overall, you guys learned the differences between a PTA and a DPT. You learned the costs, the tuition, the schooling, right? The duties and all those things. So you can make the decision on whether or not which path you wanna go and I hope you learned so much from this video so you can understand the differences. So when you're at that fork in the road, you can make that decision. 
I chose to become a doctor of physical therapy mainly because I wanted to make my own decisions and I didn't want my decisions to be supervised by someone else. I wanted to make the big decisions, baby! Let's go! <laughs> so think about that. When you're at the road and you want to decide what you want to do, consider these differences and make the decision. I encourage you to comment below and let me know whether or not you're going to choose PTA after watching this video or a DPT or if you're still kind of on the fence, then email me. You can email me at liftforchange at gmail.com. I'll, I'll put it in the description and you can determine which one you want to do and let me know. I also do online one-on-one -on -one coaching to help determine specific courses and the path that you're on so that I can help mentor you and guide you to make the right decision that is fit for your own future. If you're trying to get into DPT school, I definitely do one-on-one -on -one online coaching for that. So if you're interested in that, let me know, email me, and we'll set up something there. So if you have a friend who's interested in the difference between PTA and DBT, or if you're on a public forum like on Facebook and you found this video to be helpful, please post this video on that forum so other people can get value whether or not they should be a PTA or a DBT. And if you found this video funny and entertaining, give this video a like. So I hope this video helped inspire you to help you make the decision between becoming a PTA or a DBT. Guys, oh, yeah. can you help me with the outro? Stay lifting, stay, stay aloha, have a great guys.